we're back for another video and uh, we're gonna need some bits and pieces happening today I've been struggling to get some content out lately so uh, I'm not sure how this is gonna go today we've got an interesting job um, I work for a military museum that is adjacent to an airfield and I mean directly adjacent it's pretty much on the airfield uh, they're going to have an air show in April, and uh, we need to get some stuff ship shape. Now, about six years ago, or nearly more than that, I made a uh, light and sound show for the museum, and a whole bunch of other things. I set some Raspberry Pis up, the Raspberry Pis being little single board computers. Um, I may have one hanging around here that I'll show you in a moment. But uh, I've set them up to, do auto to automatically turn TVs on in one section of the museum. Now, they've replaced the museum, so or replaced the TV in the museum. That's the important wording there. I don't script these videos. And the neighbours are noisy. Anyway, with this uh, TV, I need to open it up and make a modification to the power switch so that a relay on the Raspberry Pi can trigger the TV to turn on. Um, that being crucial to the one-button setup I've got. They can use a wireless remote for some wireless um, power points. And uh, they can turn on all the light and sound show in one go and everything fires up automatically rather than having to walk around and turn on TVs and have a dozen remotes. So we're going to put a TV here and uh, get it opened up. Now, like literally every device I get with a screen, this one has arrived dirty, but uh, we will work on that. First of all, we're going to flip it over. We're going to pull some screws out and uh, get the back off. There's a hard power switch on the back of this. I don't see that all that often these days. But anyway, we need to work our way around here, get this back off. And we need access to, if we move our camera here and down a bit, we need access to all these buttons in here. There will be a little board in here, probably with a plug on it. We're going to pull that out, unplug it, and work on that. And maybe put a little drill hole in the plastic here. Anyway, let's get that out. All right, so... Let's uh, get some stuff out of the way here. This microphone, which we're not using today, can get out of the way. Now, this one probably calls for actual screwdrivers. So we're going to use a correct size Phillips driver for the screws, which I have to admit always seems like it's bigger than what you would expect. Anyway, one of the main reasons people cam out screws particularly Phillips, and one of the reasons why I hate Phillips screws is it's really easy to use a driver that is too small. And uh, that has obvious issues. Somewhere here I have a screwdriver set with magnets on the base that I can pick up these screws with. All right, so what we're gonna do basically is work our way around the edge of this, looking for screws and unscrewing them. I can make a horribly sexist joke there, but it has been brought to my attention that I should probably not do that because it's in poor taste. So we will uh, keep going on and not make reference to things that may or may not unscrew. So we'll be back in a bit. All right, with all the screws out, the first thing we want to do is uh, address this DVD player that's built in. I do have to say, when I look at these magnets, I have to say I'm always impressed at how far magnet tech has come. Uh, my childhood was spent pulling apart old um, old power meters which uh, had a couple of ceramic magnets in them in a funny shape. I played with many of them and I thought magnets were nowhere near what they are these days. All right, so the front panel for that DVD player has dropped off. I think we will try and separate the two halves of this which necessitates moving the camera. So we will move you, and we'll see if we can get these two halves out. See how much is attached to this. I bet you there's a, like a ribbon cable or something I can disconnect. There are a lot of ribbon cables. Um, all of which go into that DVD player. So that will be... I have to say, I hate TVs with built-in DVD players. They never quite understand all the protocols and often they're the wrong region and uh, you can't change the region on them and uh, they're just much of a gimmick oh now there's a bunch of let me bring the camera around here 
what's underneath this. All right, so here we go here. There are a lot of ribbon cables, uh, or not so much ribbon cables, but connectors. And uh, I guess those two can't go in the wrong way around. So it might be safe to pull those two out. Can't get them wrong. And this one is speakers. This one goes into a zip tied loom that I'm gonna have to chop to figure out where that comes from. But there are two more cables. All right, I'll get in there with a pair of uh, flush cutters and free those cables. All right, at this point you can see a lot of the junk in the back of the work area here too, so don't mind that, it's a lived in place. So that looks like that's main power for the DVD player. This looks like that is probably video signal. All right, and that frees us up. All right, so that means all this, oh, no, there's one more that I almost forgot about. There is a ground wire. I also disconnected the main power wire, which was on the power supply board. So ground wire is screwed on, which is nice. I appreciate good grounding etiquette. I have a bit more trust in this uh, TV now. Pick that one out with the magnet. All right, we can get rid of all of this. And I'll have to put all the screws back in that before I put it on. Because um, I erroneously thought I needed to remove those. I do not. So, let's uh, spin this TV around. It's a little bit lighter with that DVD going. And so here's our little board here. With a nice convenient plug that I can remove. I hope I can remove it. Or is it one of the soldered on ones? We will remove the assembly first. And then see what we can do with that. And I can't quite see from this angle. Put that out. I've installed new LED lighting and it's a clashing color temperature, so it does make some of the shadows difficult. So a rubber pad, we'll keep that aside. That's our button assembly. That's our little board we want. And we want the power button, which now I should probably make note of which one that is. So the power button, so that apparently fits like so. So that is our power button closest that connector. That's the one that we want to bridge and we can probably do what we need to actually directly from here. Um, so if that's power, I probably won't need to disassemble it any more than this. Uh, what I'm going to do is get some blue tack and stick it down. I'm going to grab a tremendous blob of blue tack here. Stick that down and I want to get two wires across that and there should be ample room to hang it out the back there, which would be nice. So the idea is by bridging, by getting a piece of wire or a piece of um, figure eight wire across that, I can hook it to relay and it simulates pressing the button in a nice electrically isolated way. And considering this is the mains board here, I like electrically isolated. All right, let's uh, get some wire. Now, pretty typically I would use um, heavier wire than this, oh sorry, thinner wire than this, but this has got to go around a pretty convoluted route and uh, I'm going to reel off a couple of meters here and I don't really want it to get squashed. So, I've got off the meter marker on my bench, I have one, two, three-ish meters. Close enough and I need about two, so that gives me enough to chop off. So from here we need to turn on soldering station, which apparently didn't turn on. I have to find my backup relay. That would be why. Let's try here. There we go. Now our soldering line has turned on. Let that warm up. We're going to um, strip some very short sections of insulation off these. The colouring is not terribly necessary in this situation um, because it's just going directly to a contact closure so I'll find some solder get our soldering iron hot and we'll be right back now you will have to excuse some of the uh, background noise I have the air extractor um, happening at the moment I also just found a lead a one-of-a-kind lead that was tangled around my soldering iron my apprentice has been in my workshop mucking around I need to really lock that area off is this hot enough yet to melt solder? No, it is not. The magnetic tip has uh, apparently stuck again, which does happen in this older Weller iron. 
I don't want to let my good old classic Weller go. Um, it's a massively awesome iron, um, but I'm finding it hard to get tips for it now. Anyway, back in a sec. All right, I think we're just barely up to tip temperature here now. So we can tin these wires finally. Yep. Alrighty. Not the most perfect tinning, but uh, it should suffice. Now, I'm going to cut these ultra short because I do not want any tails hanging out to contact stuff on that mains board. Because the consequences of that, whilst everything is nicely isolated, are probably reasonably dire. Now these are tactile switches and we can see here from the board can we zoom in a bit come into a three times so we can see from here that these two pins are bridged and these two pins are bridged so we want to bridge across that one and that one to make it work so we also want to uh, put a bit of fresh solder on there because I'll back it in this is lead free solder that's on there so uh, add a little bit of 6040 tin lead in here and just to change the chemistry on them a bit and also um, some of the flux in the flux core solder should address any surface oxides that are there. Alright, let's um, go in a nice outward direction that allows me to route it away from the high voltage power supply and um, try and drop it straight onto the back of that contact. Alright. So I hope. Yep, that's on nice and firm. Okay, that might even get a blob of hot glue just there, um, just for further insulation. But I'll see how that sits uh, once we put this bit in. So it's our power arm button. How close is that going to sit once it's all in situ? Look, it sits close to the ground shroud. But not enough to be of concern, but I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue on there. Now, fun fact, literally every hot glue gun I've ever had um, that is PTC based has pretty much blown up. Um, I'm not sure why, but it just gets a bit of a hard time. So now I use uh, Mr. Stoner Torch Green here and a stick of hot glue. And that meets most of my needs. All right. We will screw this back in position with a couple of screws, such as these two over here. And um, then we will begin the reassembly process and find a way to route this cable out of the case. I'm doing this one blind over here. Oh, there we go. And remember, when you're doing plastic standoffs like these things, you don't need to over tighten them. I get so many of these things with these plastic bosses snapped out. Just be gentle. It's only plastic, guys. Alright, so uh, DVD player reassembled. And I realised there are these little standoff pads that they had inserted behind here too. I understand what they're for now. Alright, and we have a couple of screws over here. So, um, what we really need to do for the first step here or really we're sort of somewhere in the intermediate step is how we're going to get this out the back of the case um, I usually like to go out one of the air vents when I do stuff like this if there's enough gap and there actually is nicely enough gap to go straight out the back here like so so I'll pull a bit of that through because that's about in line with everything else that we're going to have attached to the back. Now we need to work out our connections here. Um, let's see if I can remember because uh, against my normal flow I um, actually didn't write any of this down. So we've got a DVD power port, a DVD controller port, well they're different length plugs and so one won't go into the wrong. So that is obviously that one and that looks like that's a controller port not a power port, I think they're mislabeled, which is not uncommon. Um, this has come off header and all. So I'm looking for three pins sticking out of a board and no way, no idea which way round that should go. And that very much looks like a power connection. That is gonna require some probing. 
this guy goes in here. I might have to go back over my footage to see which way round they should be. Um, now you have a home somewhere here. You have a two pin socket somewhere on this board. It should be up this end. Um, I am definitely going to have to go over my footage and have a look. Although I think that is probably it there. That looks like the one. Yeah, and that's a two pin power plug. Yeah, I've definitely got those mislabeled. Um, so I'm going to disconnect that for the moment to give myself a bit of room. And uh, I'm going to go over my footage and find out where that guy lives. Alright, so in between clips I have reattached the earth wire. This is an audio output and an analog audio output. I'm reasonably sure that actually this was never actually used. Um, it's because everything else is done digitally through this one. Because um, that's a HDMI connection, just not conventional. So uh, this one's really the only one I've got to connect. And uh, in its intended situation, the DVD player on this will probably never get used. Um, and my concern about all the cables not lining up comes from the fact that I have this in the wrong position. And I'm trying to twist this around the wrong way. <laughs> okay, give me a minute while I reposition everything. Alright, I've got this round the correct way now, and uh, I did a bit of double checking just because, you know, I have a habit of making mistakes like every other human. Um, so these two guys here actually weren't mislabeled, I had that plug over here. So the control, the DVD power port is actually this one, and uh, I can see here when it correlates to the board, you've got a ground, you've got a 12 volt, you've got a 5 volt, a 3.3, all those ones you need. That would have been pretty catastrophic to get that over there. This is the audio amplifier side of things. And these are the different left, right and center channel audio. So the other one is um, just basically a stereo out, which is not used, um, which is good. Ground wire is in, our other wire is out of the way. Power is connected. Let's try and button this thing up. And uh, actually, you know what? Before I button it up, I'm going to route this, rather than have it laying over the high voltage side here, I'm not comfortable about that. I'm going to route this well out of the way in these cable clips over here. Alright, time to drop our zip ties out. And that's got this guy zip tied up out of the way of the dangerous bitey voltages. Alright, a little bit of slack through. Alright, mains cable back in. And yes, this has been depowered for quite a while. Um, all the capacitors are discharged. There's no nothing that's going to worry my fingers in there. All right, or my heart rate either. Took a little bit too much slack off this. A little bit back through. All right. All right. Um, basically, get this positioned on nicely. We'll get all the screws in and we'll give it a test run. Now, excuse all the junk off to the side over here. It's uh, my desk is also lived in. I'm about to commit a cardinal sin here and I'm going to do all the case screws up before I test it. And I'm sure you can imagine the risk that is involved in doing such a thing. It's uh, pretty much like when you build a new computer, you know it's never gonna work until you uh, Put the, well, it's never going to work if you put the case sides on before you actually test it. And it will be the second you test it, everything will be perfectly fine. And then you'll put the case sides on, put it in situ, wire up all the cables, plug it in, and then you get an error beep or you get nothing. So, all right, we'll be back in a sec. All right, we have IEC power connected. Got the ends of our cables stripped. Let's see if this... Uh, causes a problem. Ha <laughs> ha! It fires up! Alright, this is good. Now we're going to give this screen a good clean, but only after a test if it turns off. Oh, I just pumped it and it turned off. Let's try one more time. Turn you on. We should fire up again. I think there's probably a shutdown delay here. So turn you back on again. That's all good. And we'll just check that the other buttons work and I haven't done something stupid like knock the ground off. So we want to go input, 
and we're going to want uh, AV actually. We're going to want AV and we're going to go OK. No, OK, so apparently menu is cancelled. Ah, uh, OK. It's always interesting trying to figure out how these menus work. So, no, alright. So the original power button still functions too, which is nice. So, um, how are we going to handle this? What are we going to use for screen? I think I'm going to use some spray and wipe first, and then some alcohol. And yet, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful you don't get it in the screen. Let's see if we go input, and we go down, 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 down to AV. Does the volume plus do that? It does. That's the OK to AV. Cool. It should stay on that setting. We'll turn you off. And uh, let's go and get some spray and wipe. Now, as you can probably hear, the um, extraction is on. I'm going to disconnect the mains while I do this, just in case I do something silly. Just a very light mist of spray and wipe. This is a generic multi-purpose cleaner thing. I think we get a Aldi's and a microfiber rag. And if we are careful, we can get all of this really magically clean without too much effort. And we'll do the rim around the edge. It should look better. I'll get in at a later date with some Q-tips into the corner of all of this. But this should look magnitudes of order better. Alright, let's uh, move over and clean the rest. Alright, now we look much better. And you can see a lot of my overhead lighting, but uh, we can address that by turning that off. And um, where's my IEC lead? We'll plug that back in and give it one more test. Make sure that we haven't drowned it or something silly. All right, there we are. We're in. Take our wires, which we will simulate a contact closure. And this should turn on. <laughs> Come on, guys. Is it on? Yes, the lights turn green and should fire up. There we go. All right, it's hard to see on camera and I keep bumping the screen here, but it looks considerably better and deeper colored. Uh, there's still a little bit on the screen there that we want to get off, but I think we're cooking with gas. We've got our TV set up for automatic on and automatic off. So let's go and that should turn off. Okay, that's better. All right, that's the end of this one. I hope it was fun. We'll see you again uh, in another video.